Hello and welcome. Technology is changing and influencing many industries and many companies, but one of them is healthcare and medicine in ways that perhaps you cannot imagine. Uh, think of a company that's into consumer, over-the-counter drugs, vaccines, uh, research and development, new markets. Let's understand how this is happening and here's a, in some ways a great example of that. I'm joined by Karen and Terrell, uh, CTO of GSK, to tell us about uh, how GSK is, is using information technology or how your teams are working in GSK to change the way perhaps the whole cycle from creation and research to delivery of product happens. I think the first part of rethinking our business model when it comes to the pharmaceutical business, the consumer business, the vaccines business, is to say we need to think about the transformation and the technology hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So um, instead of thinking of technology as enabling our business as it is, we really have to think through what is the reinvention of the model that we want. And in those three areas, reinvention around science, times technology, times our culture, which really will help in drug discovery. Our ability to look at our relationship direct with our customers, how we sell, how we sell now and in the future is a huge um, opportunity for technology. And how it is we engage our end consumers, the people that buy Excedrin, the people that buy our Augmentin, the people that use our inhalers and our Ben List and Lupus drugs. How do we engage our patients? So technology is meant to really inform, enhance, and reinvent our business in those areas. Right, and, and that's, a, that's a wonderful uh, umbrella description to start with. So let's talk about R&D. What are the kind of interventions that, it, it's, and this is not necessarily a GSK question, I mean it could be aimed to any large pharmaceutical company or yeah. life sciences company uh, trying to use technology or digital to maybe speed up the process or arrive at better results. So I think drug development, uh, any digital and technology capability has got to really reimagine the experience of speeding drugs through the pipeline from the point of discovery all the way to bedside medicine. We have to actually use most technology to inform there. And that's in the selection criteria that we use of candidates in our clinical trials. Um, our ability during the trial process to make sure that the candidates stay in the trial so that we can move quickly from phase to phase when we see success, being able to predict success from R&D. So I think the, the drug development cycle is uh, absolutely a wash. Uh, with digitization and technical enablement, not just in GSK, but across the entire um, industry, including um, the contract uh, research organizations, uh, including uh, the capabilities to bring uh, clientele and candidates in uh, end to end. So, so what's happening, in, in, and you mentioned clinical trials, is it that the data is flowing faster? Or are you mining more data points? Oh, it's the engagement of the patients in the clinical trial, mm -hmm. it's the ability to do virtual trials instead of having people go to sites. Mm -hmm. Anything that we can do in order to just shrink the white spaces associated with clinical trials and use data analytics to predict what the next stages will be in order to move quickly either to failure or to success as we mount a new area. I think that's uh, the drug development. Most exciting is actually um, drug discovery mm -hmm. because bench chemists, bench um, biologists, the work that has been done traditionally in the life sciences business is being completely disrupted through uh, genetic enablement of discovery. The proof in the pudding is will the probability of success of genetically derived drugs and medicines move more quickly to our patients and more novelly uh, to our patients than the ones that have come off the bench. That is a huge emphasis and, in And what science. would be a good example of this uh, in terms of either the drug or the area that this a potential drug is trying to fight? Mapping the immune system, for mm. sure. Mm. So much is being done right now in immuno-oncology. Uh, the acquisition of Tesaro for GSK is another one of those areas of looking at oncology-based drugs so that you can actually look at the genetic links associated with those. It's the probability of success so that we know exactly how to target genetically tumors 
and how we can move quickly through the cycle to patients that need that the most. I think that that, um, we have several areas of research uh, in the area of BCMA, we have the Tassaro drugs that are going on, but it's immuno-oncology, the immune system activation for oncology drugs. Right, that's interesting. So, and in terms of your overall effort or your day, let's say, uh, how much of time goes, or on, a, on an average, uh, goes into, let's say, the research and development and the discovery versus other areas of the company and the organization? So, I, I think, I, I carry two hats. Mm. Number one is the IT mm. side of things. That's my chief technology officer role in putting in new platforms, understanding data and analytics, how we put a customer experience as well as an employee experience together. And then the digital transformation. How do we reinvent some of these? If you look at my calendar on a daily basis, I would say I split about 40% in the tech part of the business and 60% in working with the business in order to reinvent those things. Um, pharmaceutical business and life science is moving at a slower pace than most other mm. industries, which is really a huge emphasis of mine is how do we clear pathways? How do we take risk without taking any patient safety risk? So I spent a lot of time trying to really unblock uh, in the reinvent. Right, and tell us about uh, on the on the cons customer side or the consumer side, as you know, the data that's coming in. How faster are you able to respond, understand consumption trends or or disease trends, and take it back to let's say R and D or uh, other teams? So I, I think the. Serving of the customer starts with drugs that are in the market today. How do we get as quickly as possible patients that have COPD or people that have lupus mm. or people that have HIV? How do we as quickly as possible spot them in the marketplace and serve them? That's a huge emphasis of where we're doing advanced analytics all the way into AI work. Where is that next best action that we can take in order to get to our patients. That's I, I start at that end of the cycle and I move backwards into R&D. It mm. is um, our relationship with 23andMe and the genetic opportunities in machine learning that exist between our science and the genetic information of a 23andMe. That's another key example of where we work all the way upstream into the R&D. Okay, uh, you were with Walmart earlier. I was. Uh, obviously it is a different world, but how different is it? The uh, huge lessons that I learned from Walmart is don't wait for the opportunity window of someone that is trying to actually attack your business before you will respond. Understand and see that coming a mile off in order to understand. And technology companies, uh, Verily at Google, whether you talk about Microsoft's life sciences ambitions, these are tech companies that are actually trying to look at doing drug discovery themselves. So one big, huge um, learning. The scale um, of Walmart uh, really taught me that you cannot give away today's business as you actually look to invent the other. There is this really, really healthy tension and balance, and sometimes it comes down to being very careful that it is not the haves of the future and the have-nots of the current operation um, as you try to make those change. So Walmart always split the difference exactly right and brought employees as well as customers along on the journey. All right, so as you look ahead, uh, you know, the, the new areas that you're investing, the acquisitions that you're doing to help you maybe drive those uh, future directions and investments better, what would they broadly be? I know that you're ta you've talked about therapeutics and digital therapeutics. So what's the, uh, sort of tell us about the landscape that uh, GSK is looking at or we can see through you? So I won't talk about the product acquisition sure. like Tassaro and the relationship that we have with Merck, although those are gonna be really, really important um, elevators uh, for us to drive quickly through. Um, we've gotta do um, either acquisition for capability um, or partnering for capability in the area of big data and analytics, especially through ML and especially on the R&D side of things. And I think that that's something that every pharma business, whether it's Roche and Flatiron, or it's gonna be GSK and the capabilities we do, capabilities around machine learning of huge, um, high variable, uh, high velocity data is, is one area. I think the second is partnerships with um, consumer level thinking companies when they are applied into the life sciences business as we sell 
um, or in the supply chain world or in the IoT world of manufacturing. Um, that's the other area of big emphasis is not people that are working in the pharmaceutical business today from a partnership, pe people who are in front of us, even people who have helped on the retail front or have helped on the uh, disruptive media front. Uh, that's where I spend a lot of my time is around capabilities that haven't yet been applied into life sciences. Right, and, and if you were to, as a last question as well, I mean, uh, you talked about the whole immuno-oncology uh, challenge and the, the work that's going on on, on that front. Uh, what are the new fronts that, uh, let's say, uh, companies like yours are working on, which would give maybe patients uh, or potential patients some sort of, uh, you know, uh, relief that, oh, they're working on this, and they're obviously using a lot of technology, which is going to speed up the, hopefully, the market response. So I think we don't think of data um, as oil. We think of data as fragments of people's lives. Mm -hmm. And so the respect around which we think about machine learning when it comes to people's information uh, is a huge component of the trust agenda that we have. Um, and we take that carefully, not to go slow, but to go respectfully um, into AI. Where I'm incredibly excited is computational neuroscience when we look at augmented and visual reality to look at lifestyle issues in smokers health, in weight reduction, those types of things. Uh, there's a huge amount there as well as how we actually use technology to gain an understanding relationship and advocacy for the patient and not just selling them the drug and the medicine that will make them better, but actually helping them in the regimen. I'm, I'm incredibly excited about both of those. That's a wonderful note to end on. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you. Thank you.